Section 8.4, uh, you've probably seen this word before. I don't know if you studied it. Maybe sometimes in Algebra 1 uh, they get to this topic, but we're going to study it here. So even if you have learned it before, even if you haven't learned it before, we're going to kind of treat this as if, as if you've uh, never seen it. So it's uh, called trigonometry, or some people shorten it and just say trig. So let's say we're studying trig. Sounds kind of cool to say it like that. Makes you sound like you know something. But anyway, it's called trigonometry. Um, basically, uh, this comes from two words. It comes, uh, this last part is the study of, or the or the measure of, I guess, the measure of uh, triangles. See the tri right there? It's basically the measure of triangles. And we're, we're going to use this to find some things that we wouldn't be able to find before. In the last lesson, we talked about 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 triangles. They were special type triangles, and we had different rules that we could find some missing sides and that kind of thing. Well, they're not always going to have 30 or 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles. You might have some weird angles like 27 degrees or 52 degrees or something like that. So um, we have to have a way to figure out uh, some other things. So let's start off with a right triangle. Now, trigonometry is not just uh, about right triangles, but what we're going to learn in this section um, is just about right triangles. We'll learn about non-right triangles in, a, in another section or two, but on this one, we're just going to talk about right triangles. So I'm going to make sure that I put a little box right there to show that this is a right triangle. So what we're doing today only works with right triangles. So make sure you understand that you can only use what we're doing today with right triangles. What we're going to do is we're going to look at three different ratios of the sides of the triangle. All right. So um, we need to know, we need to label our sides. Well, this side right here is opposite the right angle. So you know what that always is going to be. That shouldn't be uh, much of a a stretch for you. That's the hypotenuse. I'll just shorten it up like that and just put HYP. This is the hypotenuse. Um, but what about this side or this leg and this leg right here? What are we going to call that? Well, it all depends on which angle that we're dealing with. So let's talk, let's deal with this angle down here. I could put a capital letter here to represent it. I'm just going to show you this. I don't even, I don't even know if they do this in this section. I'm kind of looking and I don't see that they do this, but I'm going to throw this out at you. I'm going to put a crazy looking letter here. It looks like an O with a little swoosh through it. This is a Greek letter of the alphabet and they call it theta. T-H-E-T-A. It's just a, it's a Greek letter of the alphabet. And this is kind of like a universal um, variable to represent an unknown angle. So if we have an unknown angle, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times they'll use this letter of the Greek alphabet and they'll call it theta. It's nothing big deal. I could have called this angle A, angle B, angle X, angle Z. I could have called it all kinds of stuff, but you're going to see this a lot later on. Not necessarily in this book, but I think when you get the Algebra 2, you'll see all kinds of stuff. Tell you what, by the time you finish all your uh, math classes, by the time you get to pre-calc and especially into calculus, you'll probably know half the Greek alphabet because they use Greek letters all the time in upper level math. So this may be the first time that you've seen this. Actually, it's not the first time you've seen this. You've seen Greek letters used before. Uh, pi is a Greek letter of the alphabet and you use that all the time. It's 3.14 and all that kind of stuff. So it's not the first time that you've seen a Greek letter of the alphabet. Um, so we're just going to use that. We're going to start off right now just understanding that when we have a missing angle, a lot of times we'll call it theta. All right, hope that doesn't bother you too much. So what are we getting at? We're getting at this. If I'm dealing with this angle right here, if I'm referencing this angle, I'm going to call this side something in relationship to this angle, and I'm going to call this side down here something in relationship to this angle. Now, if you look at this, let's do this side over here. We're not going to call it the short side or the long side or anything like that. Look where this is located. It's located opposite this angle theta. So if I'm talking about this bottom right angle, this side right here would be opposite of this angle. So I'm going to call this opposite. I'll just shorten it up. Just put OPP for opposite. Remember, this is going to be the hypotenuse. doesn't matter because it's opposite the right angle. All right. So we're not going to call this opposite. We're always going to call this the hypotenuse. But this one right here, we're going to call it opposite because it's opposite angle theta. What about this side down here? Well, this side down here is not opposite. It's right next to it. Do you see that? It's right next to it. And we have a word for that when we talk about uh, next to. And I'm going to write the whole word out since we probably don't use this word all that often. But tell you the truth, 
once you start seeing this word and you start hearing people's conversations on the radio, on TV, just in person, uh, you might hear people talk about that word adjacent. Adjacent means next to. Like you could talk about somebody, you know, well, I live adjacent to the shopping center or, you know, my, li my neighbor lives adjacent to me or that thing is located adjacent to where I am. It means next to. And this, and I think we've actually used that word before earlier in the year. We went through a whole long thing about adjacent. So it's probably not the first time now that I think about it that you've actually seen this word. But this is the adjacent side. That's the opposite side. All right. So if that is my angle, this would be the opposite side and this would be the adjacent side to this angle. Well, what if I did this? And I'm thinking about maybe using a different Greek letter, but I tell you what. I went through that whole thing about using a Greek letter, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to change things up a little bit. Let's just call this angle A. This might make it easier when I reference two different angles. Sorry about that. But we will use theta quite a bit, so at least I introduced it to you. What about this angle up here? What if I call this angle B? We'll put this in a different color because I'm going to write some different words in here. Now let's take a look at these two. Now this is still the hypotenuse. I don't care if I'm looking at angle B or not. This is always going to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. But look at this side right here. Now if I'm referencing angle B, okay, if I'm sitting there at angle B, is this side right here adjacent to angle B? No. This side right here is what to angle B? Well, it's opposite. Okay, so the blue stuff will go together and the white stuff will go together. So this side is opposite angle B. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, I thought you just said it was adjacent. But it's adjacent to what though? This is adjacent to angle A and this side is opposite angle B. So it depends on what angle you're dealing with. If I'm dealing with angle B, this side is, is opposite. What would this side be to angle B? In reference to angle B, what would this side right here be? It would be adjacent. I'll just put ADJ since we already wrote out the word. So this would be the adjacent side to angle B. My point is, through all this, is to understand that it all depends on which angle that we're dealing with. All right, We're not going to deal with that right angle because the hypotenuse is also opposite. These two would both be adjacent, so that would be a mess. So I'm only dealing with these other two angles. So if I'm talking about angle A, this side is adjacent to angle A, and this side over here is opposite angle A. If I'm dealing with angle B, then this side, this bottom side, would be opposite, and this up and down side would be adjacent to angle B. That's really important for what we're going to do here in a second. Remember what I said at the beginning. I said we're going to talk about three different ratios. We're going to take the ratio of three different combinations of sides. Now, ratio only has two things in it, okay? So I'm going to take the ratio of three different combinations of these sides. And you're probably thinking, what in the world does that mean? Well, I'm going to talk about it here just in a second. So let's um, let's get rid of all this. We'll start with a clean slate, and we're going to take a look at those three relationships that I was just mentioning. Okay, here's another right triangle. I just made it look different just so we wouldn't s stay looking at the same triangle the whole time. So uh, let's label this. Um, I'll label this. We'll go A and B again. Is that right? I hope so. <laughs> so uh, this is angle A and this is angle B. Um, this is, I tell you what, let's not do the B up here. Let's forget the B. Let's just talk about angle A for right now. All right, so if we're talking about angle A, obviously this one right here is the hypotenuse. Now this side right here is what to angle A? It's opposite. See how it's across from it? It's opposite angle A. So I'll call this the opposite side. This side right here is right next to it. See, it share one of the sides makes up that angle. See, you got these two sides that make up that angle. This side is right next to it. It's one of the um, sides of that angle. So I call this the adjacent side. So this would be adjacent. So I've got this side is opposite, this side is hypotenuse, this side is adjacent. You may not see where we're going with this at first, okay? but after we start doing some problems, you're going to look back on it and say, oh, okay, I see where he was, he was getting to. So the journey might not be so clear, but hopefully the destination, once we get there, it'll make a little more sense to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down three different ratios of the sides of the triangle, and it's really going to help us out a little bit later on. So uh, just bear with me. So I'm dealing with angle A right here. Um, there are three ratios. One of them, um, we're going to compare. A ratio is just a comparison of two numbers. In this case, the lengths of the, the sides right here. So I'm going to make some 
uh, some comparisons, okay, of two sides of this triangle. There's actually six altogether, but I'm only going to deal with three of them, all right? And let's see, let's do the first one. Let's go, let's compare. Again, we're doing a ratio, so we're comparing two sides. I want to compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And I'm sure you're probably thinking, where in the world is he going with this? Well, just hang on. Um, bear with me for a while, and then you're going to see where this is going. All right, so one of the combinations is if I took this side over this side, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now, you could have gone the hypotenuse over the opposite, but that's not one of the, the main three that we're going to deal with today. I'm only dealing with three, all right? Um, let's do another one. Let's do the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So let's do that. The adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then there's another one that's left over uh, that doesn't have hypotenuse in it, and that would be the opposite and the adjacent. I'm going to take the opposite, put that on top, over the adjacent. Okay? So these are my three ratios, and you're thinking, why, why, why? <laughs> okay, just bear with me, bear with me. These three ratios are so common and so important, they actually have their own name. This ratio, if I compared... Now remember, these are lengths of the sides, okay? This, this represents a length, this represents a length, and so does this one. If I compared this length to this length, or this side to this side, it's so common that we actually give it a name. And this is called the sine of the angle. I'll put like that, okay? So the sine of the angle. Where they get these names from, I looked it up at one point, I forget, it doesn't really matter, but they give it the name, the sine. So instead of always saying, okay, look at that right triangle, and let's compare the opposite to the hypotenuse. Instead of saying that all the time, you know what they can do? They just say, hey, look at the sine of angle A. And as soon as I tell somebody it's a right triangle, and I say, look at the sine of angle A, what am I telling them? I'm telling them to make a ratio, a comparison between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So it's just a short, nice way to tell somebody, hey, compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Make a ratio. Put the opposite side on top and the hypotenuse on the bottom. So if I just said the sine of angle A, that's what you would be telling somebody. This one right here has a name, and this is called the cosine of angle A. And again, why are we using this? Because it makes things a little bit shorter. Instead of telling somebody, hey, look at that right triangle and take the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Instead of telling them that, you can just say, hey, take the cosine of angle A. What does that tell somebody that, that knows what they're, what they're dealing with here, what they're talking about? That tells somebody, oh, if I take the cosine of angle A, that means I take the adjacent side and divide it by the hypotenuse. They're kind of like little code words, I guess, um, if you want to think of it that way. All right, they're, they're words that, that make things a little bit easier for us. There's another one. Let's do the last one. We call this the tangent. And I'm going to put of A. So this would be the tangent of A, just like the other two. What does this tell somebody? This tells somebody, okay, here's angle A. Let's divide the opposite divided by the adjacent. So let's take the opposite side, put it over the adjacent side, and that's going to give me the tangent of the angle. These are just words that have been made up, and I guess there's some kind of reasoning behind these words, but they're words that people use to represent a particular ratio of sides, of two sides of a right triangle. That's what those words actually represent. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Now what we're going to do, instead of writing out that whole word sine, cosine, and tangent, they actually shorten it just a little bit. So instead of saying the sine of angle A, they would write it like this. They would put just S-I-N. Now I know it looks like sin, but we don't say sin. Even though it's shortened to S-I-N, we still say the word sine. Instead of putting that A in parentheses, we're going to just put an A right next to it. So this says the sine of A. Now, people that know trig will look at this and I'll say, okay, the sine of A. What is the sine of A? I'll take this side, the opposite, divide it by this side, the hypotenuse. So if I ask somebody, if there were actual numbers in here, and I ask somebody, hey, show me what the sine of A is, they would take the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, and that's what the sine of A is. I'm just going to um, really shorthand it this time. Instead of putting the PPs and the YPs, I'm just going to do this. And I'll show you why I'm going to do this in here in a sec. All right, so that's the sine of A equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Then the cosine. What do you think the cosine is going to 
shorten to. It's just going to be COS. We're only going to use the first three letters instead of the whole entire uh, word. Now look, that's not much different, okay? It's not much shorter, just dropping off an E. But this is a little bit shorter, dropping off three letters, and this is dropping off four letters. So it does shorten it up quite a bit when you talk about cosine and tangent. So I would say the cosine of A equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. All right, that's the cosine. And then you have the tangent. So the tangent of A is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And you're probably thinking, how am I going to remember that? Okay, there's no way I can remember that. There's only three of them, but still all the adjacent hypotenuse opposites. I'm going to get them mixed up for sure. Well, there's kind of an easy way to remember this. Look at this right here. That's a sign. starts with S. And then the sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm just going to write it like this, just so we remember the letters. S-O-H. This is sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Let's do the same thing here. What would I do for here? Just to make it this, I'm try, just trying to make this a little bit easier to um, remember. So the cosine of A, I'll put a C, of what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'll put adjacent and hypotenuse. This A has nothing to do with this angle A. The A is the adjacent. All right, what about tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, if you put all that together, watch this. It kind of makes up a word that really doesn't mean anything, but it sounds kind of cool if you put it all together and you say it all together. And this is kind of a way to remember your, these are called your trig functions, your trig functions, okay, short for trigonometry. This is just an easy mnemonic device to remember um, what the sine, what the ratio of the sine is, what the ratio of the cosine, and what the ratio of the tangent is. And that's all that's all we're doing right here. So a lot of times we'll say it like this. We'll say so, S-O-H, we'll pronounce it so. This is ka, and this is toa. So ka toa, so ka toa. Say it fast a bunch of times. So ka toa, so ka toa, so ka toa. It sounds kind of cool. Sounds like a made up name. Sounds like a Native American kind of word, like ah, so ka toa, or something like that. Or you're ready to fight somebody and do some karate, and you say ah, so ka toa, <laughs> okay? Um, it sounds kind of cool. It doesn't really... It's not really a real word or anything. It just sounds cool. So walk around, tap somebody on the shoulder in your class, okay? And when you're in the hallway or something and say, hey, tell me what the trig functions are. And all you got to do is uh, turn to them and say, Sokotoa. So I want you saying that every once in a while. Sokotoa, Sokotoa, Sokotoa. And that's really, really going to be helpful to you. And how do we use this? Let's uh, scroll to the top so we don't see all that stuff right there. How do we use this? This means the sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So it's just a little device so that you can remember which one's which. You're probably thinking, okay, I kind of understand that. I kind of get the idea that you're trying to find a ratio between two sides, but how's that going to help us? Okay, what in the world are we going to do with this? Well, you guys ask great questions, so we're going to try to answer that question. So let's do a little example um, of what they're going to give you here in the in the chapter, in the cell lesson. Okay, here's a triangle, and look, it's one of those Pythagorean triples, and they just did this probably because it's your first one of these you're going to do with the trig functions. They just wanted to make it easy and put all whole numbers here just to make it look Oh my, I was um, sorry for the pause there. I was looking at my computer screen and my time at the bottom wasn't moving. So I don't know how much of this I got um, in there or not, but we'll we'll keep rolling along. It went from like 18 minutes to something to 19 something. But anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. I've got a right triangle here. What I want to do is I want to express each ratio as a fraction, not as a decimal, even though they say in the book that to write it as a decimal. I just want to write it as a uh, fraction. So express each trig function. Um, or each ratio. So that's that's the uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. So I want to find what the sine is of, um, let's see, of the two angles. Let's see what they do. Yep. I'm not going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of R. Okay, we're not going to talk about why, but we're not going to do that with the right angle. It's the other two that we're going to find. So I want to find the sine. Let's start with Q first. Let's find the sine of Q. Let's find the cosine of Q. And let's find the tangent of Q. Now, we're really not solving for anything, to tell you the truth. We're just um, finding what those trig functions are. Um, let's, do, let's do another color here. And let's find the sine, or 
of angle P this time, and the cosine of angle P, and the tangent of angle P. Again, I'm not really finding the angles themselves. I know all three sides. I'm not really finding the angles, but I'm finding the relationship. I'm finding the ratio okay, of the two sides that the sine represents. Remember, what does the sine mean? If I just told somebody, find the sine of Q, what does that mean? I look up here at Q, and the sine, remember, Sokotoa? Let's write that down. Sokotoa. So I remember Sokotoa. What is the sine? It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Let's go back to blue here. So it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite of what? The opposite of angle Q. So here's angle Q right here, and I want to find the opposite side. What's opposite angle Q? Well, 8 is, so I put an 8 right there. Okay, the opposite over what? The hypotenuse. Which one's the hypotenuse? That would be 17, and there you go. That's the sine of angle Q. And you think, okay, well, no big deal. I mean, I don't really understand what the importance of finding that fraction is, but you're going to see in a few minutes what the importance of doing this is. Let's do the rest for angle Q. Let's just deal with angle Q right now before we worry about angle P. So what's the cosine of angle Q? We look down here. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we're at angle Q. What's adjacent to angle Q? That would be 15. And again, what's the hypotenuse? It's the same as what it was before. 17. So the adjacent over the hypotenuse, that's the cosine. What's the tangent? The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. And the tangent is opposite, which is 8, over the adjacent, which is 15. So it's 8 over 15. And that's all they want you to do right there. Now, they do say write it as a decimal, but I don't want you to write it as a decimal. Okay, I'm more interested in the fraction. I, I like the fraction way better than the decimal. Okay. Let's do the same thing, but let's do this with a different angle. This time we're going to use angle P, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle P. Now that changes things up a little bit, and you'll see here in a second. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. This time, it, what's opposite angle P? It's 15. It's not the 8. Okay, The 8 is not opposite angle P. The 15 is. So the opposite is 15 over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse doesn't change at all. That stays the same. That's still 17. Do you see the difference between the two? The cosine of angle P is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent side to angle P? That would be 8 over the hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is 17, just like that. What about the tangent of P? The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So we go to angle P. What's opposite um, angle P? Well, 15 is, and that's over the adjacent side, the adjacent to angle P. What's adjacent to angle P? Side 8 is. And some people might say, yeah, but 17 is also adjacent to it. And you're right, but remember what 17 is. 17 is your hypotenuse. That kind of supersedes everything, all right? Just because this is adjacent, this always stays hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent leg, let's say? That would be 8, so that would be 15 over 8. If you look at this, it kind of makes um, makes it kind of interesting. Look, the sine of angle Q and the sine of angle... I should say it this way. Let's look at this. The sine of angle Q and the cosine of angle P. You see that? I took the sine of this one and the cosine of this one are actually the same, aren't they? Look at this. The cosine of Q and the sine of P, they're the same kind of interesting. Look at the difference between here. The tangent, well, why did I put theta? I didn't even just notice that. This is Q, isn't it? All right. So um, what is the, what's the relationship here? Look at the tangent of angle Q and the tangent of angle P. Look what they are. There's kind of a relationship. They're inverses of each other. This is 8 over 15. This one is 15 over 8. So there's kind of a relationship between those two as well. All right, it's just kind of interesting to see. Later on, when we start getting heavier into this, you're going to see uh, some reasons why it's kind of nice to know that, that stuff. All right, so I hope that helps a little bit. Now, we've gone 25 minutes without really getting to the point where we're going to use this stuff. Okay, so now, finally, let's use this to find something that's missing on the triangle. I know you can't wait, and so we're going to get right to it.
Okay, here's the example that we're trying to get to this whole time. And there's another one after this. But um, this time we're trying to solve for x. We're trying to find the length of that side. Now, if you didn't know your trig functions, first of all, this is not a special triangle, so we wouldn't be able to find this. Uh, we can't do Pythagorean theorem because we only know one side. So up to this point, there's no way that you could actually solve for x. But now with the trig functions, we can actually do it. There's three trig functions we have to choose from. We're kind of limited on which trig functions that we're going to use. We're limited by the information that they give us. So watch. This is the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. They don't even ask for the hypotenuse, and they don't give you that anything with the hypotenuse. But look what they give you. They give you this angle right here. All right, We could call it angle A or whatever you want to call it. Okay, We don't even have to call it anything. Let's not even call it anything. This is the angle that they give us. Now, we could figure out this one, 90 minus 25. So you could do that, um, which is what, 65. But we don't need to use that. Let's just use the one that they give us. What I want to do, I want to figure out which one of those three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, am I going to use? Well, here's the angle. Let's look at the sides that they give us. Look at x. What is x? What What's the relationship between side x and this angle, 25 degrees? Well, this side right here is opposite the 25 degrees. So we have opposite. And I'm going to write that in there. Sometimes that might be helpful. That's opposite. And what else, what do you have here? This 18 right here. What is this side to this 25 degrees? Well, it's right next to it. See how it touches it right here? It's right next to it. So that means this is the adjacent side. So that's adjacent. So what two things do we have? We have opposite and we have adjacent. Which one of our trig functions? Let's write them all down. So, ka, toa. Which one of our trig functions uses opposite and adjacent? Well, this one does right here. That's the tangent. That's how you know which trig function you're actually going to use. So that's very important. That's a question I get all the time after I teach this lesson. How do I know which one to use? It all depends on the angle and the sides, really the sides that they give you right here. So this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. That's how you know you're going to use the tangent because they don't tell you or give you the... Um, uh, the hypotenuse and they don't ask for the hypotenuse if they did that might be a different story but they just give you the opposite and the adjacent so let's set this up we're going to do tangent before when we did all that stuff we said the tangent of the angle we usually call it angle a or angle b or something like that this time we don't have a letter we actually know what the angle is the angle is 25 degrees so i'm going to take the tangent of the angle remember you always have to take the tangent of a particular angle. Since I know what the degree, the measure of this angle is, I take the tangent of 25 degrees. Equals what? The opposite over the adjacent. So that last example that we did, that's very helpful for what we're going to do right now. That's why they always stick that in the lessons. So which one is opposite the 25 degrees? It's x. Which one's adjacent to the 25 degrees? It's 18. Now we've set up a, a little um, a little equation, and then we can actually solve for x. Now, the weird thing is for you when you've never seen this before, what in the world does this mean, the tangent of 25 degrees? Well, you have a calculator, and you have a scientific calculator. So let's uh, get the calculator out and take a look at it. If you look on the calculator, they give you some buttons. They give you SIN. That's a sine button, cosine, tangent. They give you those three buttons. So your calculator actually will tell you what the tangent of 25 degrees is. What is the calculator actually giving you? The calculator is telling you, if you have a right triangle, this is 25 degrees, it's telling you that the ratio of this side, the opposite side, to the adjacent side will always come out to whatever the tangent of 25 is. Let's actually plug that in. This is how we do it. We hit tangent first, then you hit 25. You don't have to close the parentheses, but I like to sometimes. If I punch that into a calculator, what that number is going to give me, it's going to give me this side divided by this side. It's not going to give me what both lengths are. It's going to give me what the fraction equals, this over this. And it doesn't matter how big or small my triangle is. That number is still going to stay the same. That ratio between the two sides will always stay the same. I don't want to get into that any further because... Um, after you get used to doing these, just, it starts making a little more sense. It might not make sense right now, but I'm trying to get through this, so let's let's do it. So the tangent of 25, if I punch it in, look, it's just a number. Now, it's an, 
long, ugly fraction number, but it's just a number. It's a little smaller than a half. So anytime I have a 25 degree right triangle right here, the opposite side divided by the adjacent side will always be just a little bit less than a half. It'll be that 0.466 number right there. So remember, the tangent of 25 is just a number. It's just a regular number that shows up on a calculator. What I want to do is I want to solve for x. The math is very easy here. If I solve for x, I got to get rid of the 18. The 18 is being divided, so I multiply by 18, and I come over here and I multiply this by 18. Don't put an x or a dot, just put it right in front of 18 times a tangent of 25. That cancels, and so look what x is equal to. All I got to do is figure out what that is on the calculator. You definitely want a calculator for this stuff. So I can put it directly into this calculator by doing this, 18, and then hitting tangent, and then 25, close parentheses. Now when I hit enter, it's going to give me what 18 times that 0.466 number actually is. And that's about 8.39. Um, it says round, uh, where am I? Yeah, near, to the nearest hundredth. The nearest hundredth is the uh, second place. So if I round it to the second decimal place, that three does not round it up. It's 8.39, and that would be my answer, 8.39. And that's how long that side is right there. That's how you can figure out the length of that side. Now, how could I figure out the hypotenuse? Well, look, now you have two sides of a right triangle. You can always do Pythagorean theorem, or you could do a trig function again to solve for the hypotenuse. All right, this video is going a little longer than I wanted to. I like to keep them under 30, but this there's a lot of stuff packed into this lesson. So I'll try to be quick. This, this should be our last one, I believe. So let's, uh, let's figure out some stuff. Let's uh, find um, angle A. That's what they might say. Find angle A. So this time we're actually solving for an angle. They only give you this as a 90 degree angle. So it's not like I can subtract something from 90 because I don't know what this angle up here is. So I want to find an angle A. Well, this is how we do it. So watch carefully. If I'm trying to solve for angle A, look at the two sides that they give me. They give me this side 6 and this side 20. What's the relationship between those sides and this angle? Well, let's do this. 6 is, see how it's straight across from it? So that would be opposite. I'm going to write that down again. So that would be the opposite side. What is 20 in relationship to this angle? It's right next to it. It's not the hypotenuse. It's right next to it, so that would be the adjacent. And it's too bad we came out with opposite and adjacent again because that was kind of like the last one. Um, but I'm not going to do it. We, we can do more stuff in class when I get there live in class. But this is this will give you at least something to go on um, before you start working on the problems. All right. So what trig function am I going to use? You should recognize it because we just did the last example with that trig function. We have opposite. We have adjacent. So we are going to use the tangent. But the tangent of what? Remember on that other problem, it was 25 degrees. This time I don't know what it is. Since I don't know what it is, I'm going to take the tangent of that, the name of that angle, which is angle A. This is called angle A, so I'm going to take the tangent of angle A. What's that equal to? It's equal to the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is 6, and the adjacent is 20. So we set it up. That's really very, very important. The rest is kind of algebra. Um, it's a little bit weird algebra because you're not used to that tangent and sine and cosine kind of stuff, but it basically boils down to normal everyday algebra. I want to show you something on the calculator first before I do this. It says tangent of A, but look at this tangent. I don't know if you can read it very well, but if you look on your calculator, written on the calculator, usually in yellow right there, you'll see TAN to the negative first power. It's kind of tiny right there, but if you look at your calculator, you should be able to see it. TAN to the negative first. What that means is it's, it means the inverse tangent. Now let me show you something. I want to get A by itself. I can't divide by a tangent. That doesn't make any sense because tangent isn't a variable. Right? It's just a word that represents the ratio between the opposite side and the adjacent. So I can't really divide by tangent, but what I can do is I can take the inverse of the tangent. Now watch what happens. If I take the inverse of something, it cancels out. For instance, if I said x plus 3 equals 7, what's the inverse of adding something? Well, it's subtracting something. What happens when you take a plus 3 and then a minus 3? They cancel each other out. What if you had this, 3x equals 12? You took the inverse you did the opposite. 
Okay, you did the inverse operation. This was three times X. How did you get rid of it? You divided by three. And so it canceled out, okay? Same thing here, except this is not a variable. We're still taking the inverse, but this is how we do this. The inverse cancels, and I have to take the inverse of the other side as well. How do I show an inverse? Just like on the calculator, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to put tan to the negative first. That means that's the inverse right here. See how I subtracted three from both sides. I divided by three from both sides. It's kind of the same thing. Instead of dividing by tangent, I take the inverse tangent. That cancels, but I have to take the inverse tangent of the other side as well. And that's what I'm doing right there. So that was a little bit weird. We might have to talk about this a little more in class, but at least you see what's going on. So this is the inverse tangent of 6 over 20. Now it's ready just to throw into a calculator. And you think, what in the world? How am I going to do that? Well, it's actually not that bad. How do you figure out what the inverse tangent is on this calculator? Well, it's in yellow, so what are we going to do? We're going to hit second function and then the tangent button. Even up here, it shows tangent to the negative first. That's the inverse tangent of what? What are we taking the inverse tangent of? 6 over 20. So I'm going to put 6 divided by 20. I'm going to close the parentheses just to make it look nice and neat. And then I'm going to hit enter, and that should give me my answer. And that is my answer. And they say to round that to the nearest tenth, it's 0.69. That 9 will round that up. So this is going to actually, this 9 will round the 6 up. I'm sorry. So it would be 16.7. So that's 16.7. 16.7 what, though? Is that the length of the side? No, it's an angle. So it's 16.7 degrees. We actually found what that angle is. It's 16.7 degrees. And there you go. You could have never done that before today, unless you knew your trig before today, but you could have never done that, which I think is pretty interesting. If we wanted to find the rest of it, if I wanted to find angle B, how would I find angle B? I could do another trig function, but the easiest way would be this. It would just go 90 Oops, not 91. Let's try that again. 90 minus 16.7. And that would be 73.3. .3. So this right here would be 73.3 .3 degrees. That's kind of cool. So we found all the angles. And if you wanted to, you could find this uh, hypotenuse right here. You could actually do a trig function. If I had more time, I would do that. But right now, you could just do Pythagorean theorem as well because you already know that. So that would be 6 squared plus 20 squared, and what's that? That's 400, and that's 36, so it would be 436. And we'll just put it into a decimal. So the square root of 436. So the square root of 436, oops, I'm punching in my numbers wrong, aren't I? 436, and that gives you about 20 point, uh, let's say 9 or 88, let's say 20.88. So what does that mean? That means this length right here is 20.88. That's how long it is. All right, and it should be longer than this side because it is the longest side of the triangle. All right, that's a lot of stuff. Sorry it took so long, but um, we had a lot to pack in there. And I'm sure you got a million questions, and we'll make sure that we go over those questions when you work on it in class. All right, well, thanks. I hope you stuck it out, and thanks for listening, and um, we'll see you in class the next day.